Calabash TV, Imo Bakari, uh, who is here to launch a book called Conversations. First of all, Imo, welcome to Calabash TV and to Solution. Thank you very much, Bernard. I'm very happy to be here. And it says you're a lecturer and social activist, but obviously we're here to talk about the book. We'll talk a lot more about it in a while as well. But first of all, talk to us about there's a launch that's planned for Central. What is that launch? Right, this launch will be on Tuesday, 3rd March, at the Central Library from 5 to 7 p.m. On the following day, Wednesday, 4th March, at the University of the Southern Caribbean, next to the Seven Days Academy in Sunny Acres, there will be a book signing from 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, this book, Conversations, was first published in 2016 and reprinted in 2019. Conversation is a book that serves to inspire hope, purpose, and most importantly, action in terms of addressing a number of the social ills that we are beset with in the region. Now, there's an issue with reading in the world, in our part of the world also, and people really are not too much into reading. So people need to read, as Dr. Ben Carson said, you know, reading is the exercise for the brain. And, and and the brain once stretched by an idea is never the same again. So just as physical exercise is important for the body, so too is reading is important for the development of the mind, in terms of the development of vocabulary, broadening of knowledge, writing skills, etc. So there are many issues and we need to find solutions to those issues. So this book is inspiring Caribbean people to look at within, to be determined, and to come up with the strategic interventions that are necessary to address our problems. Mm -hmm. So I see it as an important tool, whether it's for the young, the not too young, or the old, in terms of asking ourselves the important question, are we satisfied with our developmental status at this point in time in our historical development? Was this something that was happening that, that was concerning that you thought, I need to put this into writing, or you were writing generally and then you just decided well, to Well, I've been this involved out. in developmental work for mm -hmm. the last 44 years, mm -hmm. all right? And I've had multifaceted experiences as an educator in, in social activism, political activism, in, you know, in community work in a significant way. So, you know, I believe I, you know, I have a perspective. I, I have messages I want to share with the world. And, you know, getting feedback from people is important. Inspiring people to mm -hmm. also share their stories because we have our story to tell. And if we don't tell our stories, well, then who will? So, I think it's very important that we are all um, inspired to make a contribution to our civilization and its development. So you think at, currently at the moment that we're not making a big enough contribution or we are but there's a lot no, more we can do? we are not making a big enough conversation, a contribution mm -hmm. because many of our um, citizens are prepared to put their fate and destiny in the hands of politicians and when things don't go wrong they make noise. But more than making noise, it's important that they get involved and make a direct contribution. Even though it is not directly political, but all things are political once you're trying to promote change, whether it's not about being involved in a party, but involved of promoting the, the, the idea of change. So whether it's NGOs, CBUs, you name it, people can find um, platforms through which they can make a contribution to solving their own problems. Mm -hmm. I just want to expand a little bit on that. How exactly, because I know people come out, they vote, they, well, they support. Well, as I say, mm -hmm. just merely voting mm -hmm. hasn't been working, all right? So to avoid that scenario, you know, people need to organize, mm -hmm. they need to strategize, and they need to pick some area or areas, if it is within the ambit, to address over a period of time. The change that we are looking for is not a magical change that will happen just like that. We first of all have to clearly define what is besetting us. And based on that understanding, tapping into the collective genius of all of us, find the solution. It's hard work, it will take time, but it is very important that we are engaged in the process rather than just depending on someone else to find the solutions for us. Um. <laughs> The, the, the region has been independent for a while. We're celebrating our 41st anniversary in St. Lucia. Yeah, I had to wish the island uh, it's in happy independence tomorrow, Independence Day in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. So all St. Lucians, I hope that you enjoy the day, but most importantly, ask yourself the question, are uh, you all satisfied with where the country is at in terms of its development at this point in time? And if you are not satisfied, well then, as a responsible citizen, ask yourself the next important question, what can I do to 
make a difference. But when you speak to other people, they said, well, all the power resides with politicians. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a misnomer. Right. And, and if the people continue believing mm -hmm. believe that, they will find themselves in a very weak position going forward. Because that is not the case. People can exert their power in an organized manner. Right? So give yeah. us an example, exactly. Okay, for example, let's look at an issue. Uh, all right, mm -hmm. if you look at agriculture, mm -hmm. all right, you need government for perhaps to provide an enabling environment, right? But if you have people who have reasonable resources, who has a passion and an interest in agriculture, you don't need the government to start doing something. But you could lobby the government as an organized entity to provide certain things, you know. So to make a start to address any area that is important, people can at whatever level. And they must, if they don't recognize that, they will only be talking about the government and the government and the government. It's not just about the government. God has blessed us with a lot of talent and ability, and we have to exercise that talent and ability in terms of finding a way forward and collaborate, lobby as we need to with government or international agencies, as the case may be. You know, we need to better appreciate the power that resides within us in terms of finding solutions. We cannot just pass it on to somebody else because, you know, they will do it as they see fit. So what role does policy have to do? Because everything has to be driven by policy. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you talk about agriculture, for example, and, 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 yeah, and yeah. we've been discussing it in terms of even our food security, the amount of food that we import and so on. Yeah. But most times it's policy that has to drive a lot of things. How can the people themselves well, if the people, make an influence if, policy? If, if, if the citizens are not organized, if the citizens are not involved in agricultural cooperatives, agricultural associations, if they do not seek to further educate themselves in the area, all right, then they will not be in a position to have any influence on policy. The government just wouldn't listen to an individual unless the person maybe you know have a certain kind of standing status, you know, backings, etc. You know, so they have to organize themselves in appropriate organizations and put forward proposals. Do and propose. Do and propose. And not just by proposing. Or you could propose on the, basis, on the basis of what you have done. You have 200 acres of something under cultivation, and you could talk about what you have done. You have exported such and such, but to go to the next step, we need this kind of support. You'll be in a much better position. Every citizen cannot do that, but those who can should do what they can and use that as a, a bargaining tool to move forward. So you're saying the key is organization and do, get things going. Research organize, do, you know, and continue lobbying, right? You cannot just make noise or make a noise. Eh? But if you are making noise or advocating a point on the basis of a track record, what you have done, you'll be in a more powerful position. So coming back to the book, the book is trying to encourage people <laughs> not just to have a conversation, mm -hmm. but to put the conversation into action, all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the book. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know you have on the political, <laughs> yeah, 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 political no problem, no problem. You have unity and power. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, I was yeah. going to get, because I know we, yeah. from, from the organization you talk about unity, yeah. and I know there's the power. And the, I'm coming to the book in a yeah, while, yeah, but yeah, yeah. No one problem. of the things I wanted to ask <laughs> relating to the power, yeah. that, and we've been having that discussion here as well, that yeah. whether part of the organization you're talking about is people getting involved in political parties where they can now better influence and shape the decisions that politicians make. People... People have the right to join political parties, mm -hmm. but they also have the right to form other types of organizations that can advance their own best interests. You follow? Mm -hmm. So it's not just the parties, right? The, the political parties is not the only vehicle. Cooperatives is a vehicle, all right? Business development as a whole is a vehicle. For example, we talk about a business sector. A lot of persons in the business sector, they may contribute to political parties, but they may not be involved, per se, in a political party. Through their chambers of commerce, etc., they have a voice, they have a respect. Most governments will tend to give them a hearing. So we have, the citizens have to put themselves in a position to get a hearing, but most importantly, based on what they have been doing. So you must organize, you must have some kind of project or projects that you have been involved in, and you'll take it there from that starting point. You know what I mean? You can't do it in a you know in a, a loose manner. You know, just you know, talking because you have the right to talk. And Caribbean people are never 
afraid <laughs> to express an opinion. Mm -hmm. And after the opinion is expressed, well, that is the end of everything. And that's, what, that's, that, that, that's my last question before we get to your book. Because that was, as you mentioned, Caribbean people, that yeah. was the issue that we have, that Caribbean people are yeah. not very good at organizing, mobilizing, and lobbying for yeah. certain All issues. Right. Yeah. And if you look at the developed world, right, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of that. You know, you have a lot of different types of organizations. And, and because of their organizational strength, because of their track record, etc., their lobbying power has increased in a phenomenal manner, you know, because they have a platform upon which they stand, you know what I mean? Just as how all of us today in our own existence, we stand on our lineage over time. You know, we must never forget that, the contribution of those who went before, you know. So in terms of laying a, a platform for future generations, if this generation has done, li uh, has done not much in terms of um, giving the upcoming generation a, a, a strong starting point, you just can't blame them, and a lot of that takes place. You know, yeah, people talk about the young people and the young people. I mean, it's a sad commentary. What exactly is meant by that? Right. There are so many positive young people in the region, you know what I mean? So we have to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. Have we laid a platform for them to move on? All right. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming to Conversations, which is the uh, latest publication that you're launching here in St. Lucia. Uh -huh. And I noticed the, um, you first, you're first starting off with inspirational yeah give us an idea of why you decided um, to start focusing on inspirational issues well you know they say that um, those who remain still the world comes to them you know mental clarity is important all right before you could engage in anything you need to have a cognitive map a clear mental picture as to what you want to do anything at all you can think about if you, if you, if you do not have a clear mental picture well then you'll just be doing because probably had a whim or you know that you should do something so we need to research things we need to think through things then we have to have clarity mental clarity and from the mental clarity we could put on a proper physical plan that could guide us so i'm saying within stillness within internal clarity because when you talk about being inspired you know it has to be internal first if you are not clear internally you know externally I don't think you could um, really inspire anyone. If you don't believe in your God-given talents and abilities, who else would you be able to inspire? If you don't believe, who do you want to believe in you? So to get others to believe, you must communicate that strength of belief that will move people to say, well, yes, it makes sense. This person is really reaching, you know? So if you want to do something and you're not inspired, but not, is it possible for it to be done? Not at all. Yeah, so we need inspiration. Mm -hmm. Of course, we need strategy. Yeah. <laughs> because we, we don't want to be just be inspired and not strategic. Right. right? Yeah. And um, there are a few po poems there. Um, yeah. I know this commitment, judgment, stand for a boy's mindset. Yeah. And the last one in that section is yeah. blunder. Yeah. So you say, don't be afraid to make, make mistakes? So or is that what this is about? Well, yeah. the point about it is this. You know, those who try will make mistakes and you will have the best chance to succeed. But if you're just expressing an opinion without actually doing something. So if you try and, and you have failed, there are many lessons. So part of the formula for success are mistakes. Not that you are setting out to make mistakes, but in the pursuit of doing anything, mistakes will be made. And most importantly, learning from the mistakes so that you know you can do it better the next time. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep hearing throughout the region, education reform, education reform, that we don't have the right um, structure to develop a Caribbean person. But yeah. talk to us about how you're addressing it on the in your book conversation. Right, so let me look at the, the topic here mm -hmm. under education. Flexi uh, degree. Flexi degree. I want to. I'm gonna read flexi degree, mm -hmm. and I will make a few comments on that. All right. All right. So that is page twenty, right? Yes. So flexi degree reads as follows: You proud that you now have your degree, and believe that you're entitled to a big fat salary. Can you command such money? What your contribution will be if employed? What value will you add to the organization's future? What will you contribute to its life story? Many have misread the script and feel that employers should jump on seeing their transcript. They are not prepared to prove their worth, yet believe they are first class and not patient, critical thinkers and cross-talented. Yet they believe their employers must empty the vault in their pocket 
like a fast launching rocket. A degree is not a full measure of what you bring. Smart organizations are moving beyond the traditional interview, conducting psychometric testing to ensure that profits don't hit the floor with the poor choice of applicants. Candidates should not believe that a degree is sufficient. Your interpersonal skills count, your presentation skills count, your work ethic counts, your attitude counts, your drive counts, your vision counts, your achievement at work counts, and your aptitude counts too. Patiently develop your skills so that you broaden your horizons and go soft on the salary demands in the interim. So let me hear your take on it, and then I will give you my comments. <laughs> Bernard. No, um, okay, well, you're a lecturer at uh, the University of Southern Caribbean, mm -hmm. psycho psychology lecturer, yeah. and obviously I'm sure probably your students have read this as well. Yeah, some of them, yeah. Do they, do they understand? Well, what I do, mm -hmm. every lecture I have, almost every lecture I have, I mention this to them, mm -hmm. that your success is not just based on a degree. Your success in life or being smart is, in my pers from my perspective, is not premised on having a degree. There are so many successful people who have utilized their God-given talents with or without degrees and maximized its output in terms of their contribution. So to be the whole person, you need to be developed on all fronts. All right? You, you need to have um, the soft skills. You need to have um, broad-based knowledge. You, know, you mustn't just be focused on an area of discipline. If you are not the total person, for example, there's a saying, the MBA will get you through the door, but after that, is your performance that comes. If you have an MBA and you are employed and you cannot add value, you cannot increase the profit, you cannot grow the organization, the degree doesn't matter. So that is the message I'm conveying there. It takes much more. Mark Zuckerberg who owns Facebook, he dropped out of university. Mm -hmm. I am not advising students to drop out of <laughs> university. Yeah. But you know what? He recognized that I could fast track the path, the pathway. You know, Bill Gates dropped out. You don't have to drop out, but understand that you need much more than just a, something on a piece of paper. And a lot of employers have been burnt over the years, and they have recognized that when they conduct their interviews now, they create scenarios to see, well, how will you treat with it? What is your all wrong kind of experience and background, and not just that you pass with honors and you know, that kind of stuff. It requires much more than the, that. The two gentlemen you mentioned there, they, go, they went into business for themselves yeah. and to change the world as well. Of course. And now when you look at even the, the University of Southern Caribbean and, yeah. and the UE and so on, yeah. in terms of the students that are coming out of there, yeah. they're coming out very well qualified and, yeah. and, and ready to do the issues. But when you look at the Caribbean, we're not yeah. really resolved. Well, I will be honest with you, mm -hmm. right? I will not talk my university. No, no, no. We're not, or no. or mm -hmm. any other university. Mm -hmm. But universities have to up their game in terms of uh, producing that all-rounded student. We have to move away from the heavy theoretical focus mm -hmm. and you know, introduce as far as possible a practical component. For example, a former student of mine from Nevis, Curtis Clark, who did a master's in um, Taiwan, their whole examining system is, is practical-based. So all of their examinations were practical examinations. They were exposed to theory, mm -hmm. but they were examined on practice. So when they are released, they are in a far better place to practice than somebody who has been exposed to a lot of theory and very little practice. So that's what I was going with this, because yeah. for example, I look at, when we look at the Caribbean, we look at our challenges. Yeah. So for example, we have environmental challenges, we have yeah. poverty, we have education, we have, um, even in terms of independence, because a lot of our resources are owned by people who are not from the region. Yeah. How can we get those students to understand that we are independent technically, but in yeah. terms of our own, creating our own yeah. sources of employment, dealing with our own issues like environment, you talk about climate change, but yeah. we still have issues right throughout the islands. Well, the universities have to change their models of they have how they train their students, you know. You can't be training students to get a job, all right? You have to train students to create jobs. The mindset of most students is not one to get, is not one to, um, create jobs is one to find employment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And employment is becoming scarcer and scarcer, you know? So if people were trained from primary school, at least, about job creation, you find the orientation would have been different at this point in time. But they are not trained. They are trained that, you know, get a degree and you're good to go. 
but you are far from good to go with just a degree. Because you're not developed, you follow? You're not honed into practice. So when you go out there, it's a whole new set of learning. You could be a star in the class and last in the workplace, you know, because you lack so many of the important skills to make you an effective employee, to make you an effective person. So that's why in the poem I mentioned all the other things mm -hmm. that has nothing to do yeah. with uh, a degree mm -hmm. per se that will make you the whole person. Functional in the society. Yeah. Cultural. Fun so you haven't, you haven't shied away from our culture and so on. And I see you have a poem that can, can called, Can Carnival Be Saved? Yeah. <laughs> can it be saved? Does it need saving at this point? Well, uh, I haven't read a poem yet, but I'm sure. Yeah, well, the point, <laughs> That's on page 27. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, me, let me look at it. The, mm. point, the point about this, Bernard, is that, you know, <laughs> you know even, even in terms of that, you know, um, that is not being um, maximized in terms of the kind of value it can really bring. I mean, this was written in the Trinidad context. Last year when I launched it in Grenada, the mm. host said that uh, all you have to do is replace uh, Grenada with Trinidad. It's the mm -hmm. same, it's the yeah, same, same thing. Same, yeah. It said Lucia is going to be no different. Yeah, no different. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, uh, for example, Pan, yeah, invention of the Trinidad, mm -hmm. the invention. And you have a poem there on Pan the, as well. Yeah, the, the Pan the, man. Yeah, the only invention of the, last, of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. But which nations are really benefited from Pan? Not Trinidad, not the Caribbean. They are using pan in a serious way. Pan in education, pan as industry, you know. Pan, pan size in Japan are rampant. Pan manufacturing facilities, you know, widespread. We have very few in the region that has that international capacity. You understand? So, so that's the point I was making. Yeah. Our, our, our educational institutions missing that opportunity because they should have well, been they, at the they, forefront. They have missed it, right? Mm -hmm. Our educational institutions have missed the opportunity because... For example, one of the foremost researchers on, on carnival affairs is a, a former judge from Texas called Ray Funk. He visits Trinidad Carnival every year mm -hmm. doing research. You follow? We have researchers here, Dr. Rudolph Otley, Dr. Hollis mm -hmm. Liverpool. Yeah. Right? But the point is, you know, we have foreign people who have recognized how valuable it is and they are maximizing it more than us here in the region. Um, well, I'll just. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I see one one poem on sports. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and no, well, I understand some, you're a sports person as well. On, um, the glory days in cricket. Oh, so and, that's yeah. there as well. Yeah, let, but, me go, let me go regional. Okay, uh, but, uh, but this uh, one football at that, that that's my well, that's my, my home town mm -hmm. in um, Trinidad Point Fourteen, and mm -hmm. um, we have had a, a strong sport in history. You know, for example, the '1973 World Cup team. Most of the members of that team were from that area. Okay, we have had some footballing names that are part of the you know the the historical um, landscape where people just can't forget about their exploits mm -hmm. over the years, you know. The Roy Dillian, you know, Warren Archibald, these are names that will live on for a long time because of their outstanding feats in and out of Trinidad and Tobago, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, go ahead, Bernard. Yeah, so, so what did we miss? We'll get to glory days in a while. Yeah. But, I mean, the, our biggest spot is cricket. Right. And it's it, it's not what it was to be, like as you said, glory days. The yeah. glory days are kind of behind us. Yeah. I'm hoping there's more ahead of us. Yeah. Um, but what did we miss with from we, the transition from where we were? To where we, we, we lacked a developmental um, paradigm. We are, you know, beset by you know a lot of small mindedness, pettiness, vindictiveness, insularity. You know that when you add it all up, we just sink in deeper and deeper. You know what I mean? So we need big mindedness. The Caribbean is a small place. They say Lucia and Trinidad, yeah, it's a small little region, you know what I mean? So we need people to understand that. But that Caribbean consciousness, I mean, sad to say, is far from what it's supposed to be. And people see themselves as a Caribbean people, as a Caribbean nation, you know. You know, and if you're so small and you're fighting among yourself, you know, your chances of really <laughs> advancing your cause are very, very, very weak, you know, very slim, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, we need to recognize that the best way forward is to work together. Truth be told, people on their own, outside of the political thing, tend to work together. There are a lot of collaboration among Caribbean artists, soca artists, informally, that kind of stuff. But we need to have more um, formalized working relationships. You know, A lot of the arrangements that they have been speaking about, we continue to talk about it. They are nowhere close to where they're supposed to be, CSME, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et you know what I mean? And I see you have a poem there called CARICOM. Yeah. Caricom is a well-known name, but in terms of what it has done, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, you know, a lot of the current generation tell them Caricom, they might ask you, what that's, what's that? You know, 
Well, they're having meetings. They just finished they, the meeting have, in Barbados. They have something. meetings all the time. Yeah. It, they have not really reached a man on the street in terms of, you know, an organization that is advancing their cause, standing for them, you know, what they exactly they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I see you have a, uh, well, Spice Isle, Grenada, you yeah, imagine, for Joe, and there's it, a tribute to Sufre, that's our Sufre, uh, Sufre. No, nah, Sufre right here. Right yeah. here, now okay. I, all of my previous visits to um, St. Lucia, I stayed in Sufre, and I have a okay. very strong relationship with a group called the Sufre Action Theater. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And those guys and I, you know, we are one, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I love the island, but Sufre is my favorite tongue, although I'm staying in V4 this time around. <laughs> Okay. But all the same, let me read that yeah, poem. Yeah, yeah I mean, of course, tribute to Sufre. At the end of the day, a tribute to Sufre is a day a tribute also to St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. You know, so would you allow me just to read it? Yes, on page 51, yeah, go ahead. Page 51, yeah. yeah. My first association with the island of St. Lucia was with the village of Sufre. The year was 1999, and I enjoyed my time staying there. It was a fun-filled, educational, and refreshing experience. My host, Linus Harrell, and his wife, Delia, did everything to ensure that I was treated well. The revelation came through my awe-inspiring encounters, my journey from Castries to Sofre, whether it was passing through Ansel Ray or Canaries, was one of sheer delight. Lush greenery from the mountain top all the way down, steep slopes, enticing valleys and winding roadways, surrounded by the translucent and blue Caribbean Sea, provided free and natural therapy. On entering Sufre, the Pitons were a sight to behold as they stood out so outstanding and bold. Bathing in the sea was to my eternal glee. Having come from the seaside village of Point Fortin in Trinidad, it was like from home to home as I swam in the calm waters. The brothers of the Sufre Action Theatre, Jude, Glenn, Maba, Stivako, Giovanni, and Vadada, and every other provided vibrant intellectual further. The relationship has gone so well that I have made five visits to date every time without decline. Sufre is the place for me. The sulfur spring soothed into the mind, body, and soul, and bathing in it made me feel sprightly and bright. Its steamy waters on my anatomy was pure fantasy, physically and mentally. And interestingly, Sufre will always remain a fun place for me where I can recharge my body in its entirety. A tribute to Sufre is a tribute to St. Lucia. So we expect to see you in your numbers come Tuesday till March. <laughs> Most definitely. At the central and there'll be a lot more of that. At the Central Library <laughs> from 5 to 7. There's many more interesting poems. Mm -hmm. We'll read a few more before the interview is out. Yes. And the book is at a affordable price of 45 EC dollars. You could call 287-4234. 287 make to confirm your attendance and to order your copy of the book. In terms of theatre, yeah. um, the, the region has a very strong, rich history yeah. of theatre. Um, and we had, I think you hosted Carrie Fester not too long ago. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. But when you speak with people in theatre, they aren't among the happiest people. No, because again, you know, uh, they're not an enabling environment. They, uh, the authorities do not see it as a, a product that could um, bring income, which is a huge error, you know, because cultural products, you know, marketed properly can bring huge income. Or you look at tourism in the Caribbean, it's really sun, sun and sea still, all right? Mm -hmm. The tourists, the modern tourists will like to have an experience. So, when the tourists arrive and throughout their stay, what are the experiences, not just visiting sites, but in terms of um, absorbing the cultural richness of the citizens, you know. So you need to have um, live activities, you need to have um, traditional cultural things that are on show, on display, you know. There should be a place where you could experience in Lucia in one place with different live activities, other type of historical activities, you know, and experience, you know a lived experience from the visit and not just a visit to a destination in on the island. So that's the perspective I have on it where you know you can really maximize value. You follow? So in the context of Trinidad, you know, you hear about doubles, etc. You hear about all different kind of stuff. People come and it's being prepared on the spot, you know. Uh, uh, 
a live experience, you know what I mean? A fish bro being prepared on the spot, you know what I mean? So we have a lot to offer that we could offer throughout the year. On the cultural side, we could offer different things throughout the year. In the context of Trinidad, Carnival, we don't even have a, a Carnival Museum where the whole history of Carnival can be told, plus everything about Carnival you could actually experience, not only at Carnival time. So yeah. that's my perspective on it. Yeah, true. I'm beginning ready for Carnival, I guess you just had Carnival. No, okay, Carnival is coming, coming up. up in Trinidad. Yeah, yes, Carnival that's right. Yeah. 24, next week is Carnival. Right, so yeah, that's next coming up. Monday and Tuesday, yeah. Now, I, I was going to ask you about CARICOM, but you, the, just the two first words you have, CARICOM, CARIGON, that says everything about what we yeah, need to know yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> so we can, read up, we can read about it yeah, uh, yeah, some yeah. more. Yeah. Um, social. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, a headache for us in the Caribbean. You have Stop the Killing, yeah. who is a bandit. Yeah. Um, how concerning is it for us as a people? Again, we haven't been able to resolve that question, issue. Let's repeat the question, Bernard. repeat the question. No, I say the two poems I'm, that stood out. Yeah. Stop the Killing, yeah. who is a bandit. For us, under social, yeah. under social, we haven't been able to resolve our issues relating to crime mm -hmm. in the region. Jamaica, Trinidad, St. Lucia, yeah. it's worrying. Yeah. How, uh, how concerning is that for you as a writer? Well, it's very concerning. Any Caribbean citizen would be very concerned. But remember, um, crime fundamentally is socially conditioned. All right? And um, our social issues. They, go, they have a, a long history, all right? So whatever solutions we have to find for crime, it, wouldn't, it cannot happen overnight. Everyone has to be engaged. Um, with the, in the context of Trinidad, you can, you know, in a lot of ways, you, know, you, can, you can see people under siege, right? But you know what? Um, the, you need responses to that, but that's just immediate. But to really solve it, we have to dig deep. We have to put, pull all the minds together to explore it and find solutions as we go along. The solutions that we are looking for wouldn't just fall off from the sky. We have to work hard to find the solutions. And we have to understand that it will take time, but we have to be engaged in the process. Talk important, but of, of course you can't only talk alone. You have to do the necessary research, right? Because you, you, want, to be in, you want to make informed decisions, not emotional decisions. So when people speak, they speak from an emotional standpoint. Kill them out, you know what I mean? That is pure emotion. Because you might kill them out, but they, they are still being produced. Drugs are a, a calypso called the bandit factory. So you're killing, but they are still, the conditions are still producing them. So you still haven't really addressed it at the core level, you know? So all of us, social scientists, concerned citizens, government, right? But that kind of mindset for that to happen, people want immediate results. Of course, a bad situation needs to be controlled. But if you're talking about solutions, it's a lot of hard work. Research is an important part of it. Constant collaboration with both academic and non-academic people, governmental. But most times, we discuss that from a theoretical point of view. We might even form committees, but a lot of times they don't really work because people have different agendas, right? Politicians want to get re-elected. So they're not interested in research data to inform decisions. They're interested in the best decision to be re to get voted again into office. You understand the situation with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you keep mentioning research, 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 and I know we have uh, some of that done. We have a lot of consultations, consultations almost every day. The consultations. Well, we have we, we in terms of research. Which uh, is good. As from a Caribbean point of view, we yeah. have insufficient research. Yeah, but uh, but the important thing about research, mm -hmm. if you research, it has, to be, it has to be used. If you research and the information is not used, the research was well, just a paper, an academic paper. Mm -hmm. the research only really could have its full value when the findings are put into practice. Anything other than that is an academic paper on a shelf. So the key thing is starting to implement those things because we, yeah. I think Caricom put out a very detailed We, we have document. to implement stuff. Mm -hmm. We have to implement stuff. If we do not implement stuff, you know, we will have a big problem. And we have a deficiency in that area, implementation in the Caribbean. Well, of course, yeah. Because I just told you, the politician, what is the best decision to be re-elected? In, in three years' time, two years' time. Three, yeah. four, five years, <laughs> in the case of me, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. But the people must never give up on their own responsibility to do something, mm -hmm. all right? People can do a lot, even outside of the politicians. 
We, we have to keep reminding our viewers that the book yeah, launch... Yeah, the book launch is uh, <laughs> the 3rd of March mm -hmm. at the Central Library. There's a book signing also at the University of the Southern Caribbean, Sunny Acres, mm -hmm. on Wednesday 4, 6 p.m. All right? You can call me at 287-4234, 287-4234. Right? This book is an important book exploring the social, political, economic, cultural, historical reality of the Caribbean in an easy-to-read manner of poetry and prose. So you are not stressed to read to, you know, inspire yourself to do something. We need to do more, all right? The book launch is not just a book launch to sell the book. Of course, we want the book to be sold, the books to be sold, but we want you to be inspired to do something more for St. Lucia, to do something more for your beloved region. Mm -hmm. We need to do more, all right? We just cannot consult and talk and get vexed. It wouldn't solve anything. We need to put, you know, our money where our mouth is. Right? All, all the, um, the poems that you have there, just the heading alone, the titles are provocative. Yeah. Now, interestingly, you ended with identity. That's the last of the poems that you have yeah. on the identity. Right. And the first one, I'm sure, is, 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 is quite identity. Uh, provocative. How is she dark so? Yeah, well, What's the statement you're making here? <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a, a colonial slave pass, all right? And um, the plantation... Um, Mother still exists in Caribbean society, you know, the color discrimination, you know, whether covertly or overtly, you know, it exists, mm -hmm. and um, people are affected by it still, all right? Um, people of um, African origin, you know, have been made to feel as um, nobodies in many different ways, and um, it's so sad because, you know, Archaeological findings have confirmed, you know, the creation, origins of man on the African continent. Um, many great contributions have been made by ancient African societies led by Egypt. So there's a rich history in terms of achievement, but the history that has been, um, the stories from the history, from, a, from the point of view of the slave experience that have been um, presented to people have been stories that have not inspired them to feel good about themselves. So when you don't feel good about yourself, when they make you feel that by the color of your skin that you're inferior and you don't have a sense of a rich history, which you have, but not aware of, you'll be very weak to deal with the issues of the world. So identity is simply who you are, right? And who you are is not your skin color. Who you are is the total being that stands on the basis of a great history a great past, great achievements. But if you are not aware of those who went before you, connected with you, what they have contributed, and all the stories you have been told is one of degradation, devastation, you would not be a competent, confident, contributing citizen in the world. So we need more confident, contributing citizens in the Caribbean playing their part. The reality is, Professional African footballers, whether from the Caribbean or Africa or North America, in 2020, as it was in 2019 and all before, are being heckled because of how they look. This is where they would at still. So we need to find that internal strength. If we don't have that internal strength, and we need to know more about what our people contributed, we will feel weak and feeble. And a weak and feeble person cannot make an effective contribution to life. And knowing about yourself is not feeling that you're better than anyone else. We are part of the human race, but you need to know your part. But if you don't know your part, how would you be able to relate to the other parts of humanity? So we need to rise above it. But people have been affected badly by being told a lot of nasty stories about their blackness. As Calypsonian Duke said so many years ago, the deceased Calypsonian, black is beautiful. As Chronics, the reggae singer within recent times, has said, black is beautiful. But we just don't want it to be a statement. You must have the story behind the statement so you could face this world with confidence and make your contribution. So that is the message in that story there. You want us to read a little piece? Give us a tease, yes. A little tease, how she dark so. Mm -hmm. Out of our plantation experience emerges a concept pregnant with negative connotations, providing grounds for infuriation 
White is right. If you're wrong, stick around. And if you're black, stay black. Is it true that very dark-skinned people have it real hard? Is it true that Dr. Keith Rowley's dark complexion is really an issue for consideration? Is it true that many find others too dark and dislike them? Is it true that some mummies and daddies tell their popos that they look like black zambos? Is it true that some try not to they look like midnight? Is it true that some families treat those of a fairer complexion better and regarding those of the darker hue as the scum of the earth who are treated like dirt? These are the piece of Mathieu Bonad. Mm -hmm. So I think the message is clear. You know, mm -hmm. when you are told these things, and even families are engaging in this kind of destructive conversation, how do you expect to have a confident child? So St. Lucia, you can see that the poems here are easy to follow with deep messages. And the occasion is yours, Tuesday, 3rd March, Central Library from 5 to 7 p.m. Wednesday, 6, Wednesday, 4th March, at the University of the Southern Caribbean St. Lucia campus, next to the SDA Academy, Sunny Acres, from 6 p.m. The price is right, 45 VC. Call 287-4234, 287-4234, to confirm your attendance and to order your copy. We need to do more as Caribbean people. We have the ability. We need the unity. We need the cooperation. We need to rise over petty considerations and make the region brighter. Poems that awaken the imagination and have our conscience. Um, so the book, Conversation. Yeah. Um, we, everybody should get a copy of this. Um, Imo Bakari, lecturer and social activist. It was a pleasure speaking with you and having you here. And we look forward to having further conversations with you again. Thank you very much, Bernard. I look forward to the opportunity uh, next time around. Definitely. So get a copy of the book, um, Conversations by Imo Bakari. 287-4234. Um, Remember the number? 287-4234. Call and get your copy. 45 EC is the price. Tuesday, 3rd March, Central Library, 5 to 7 p.m. Wednesday, 4th, University of Southern Caribbean, Sunny Acres, 6 p.m. Book signing. So we should add to that salesman as well. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> sales pitch. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for joining us. And we're happy we had this conversation because we try to have a lot of conversations on what true independence means uh, and what development means and how we as people ought to empower ourselves uh, and make a difference. Thank, thank you. you. This is Calabash TV. We appreciate you being here. Join us again next week as we continue our conversations on national development. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is The Reality Show.